Why should we preserve this property and other properties of the Manhattan Project? I think that people really want this connection with the past, with a physical object. Um, they, they want to be able to touch things. They want to be able to um, go to a place and visualize where an event happened. Um, it's a very different kind of experience from just seeing a photograph or just reading about it. We have the, 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 the poignant and, and difficult remainders in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that have been preserved there. But here in America, where these visitors are coming to learn what it's about, we don't have anything. Within uh, a mile of this museum, in all directions, existed the Manhattan Project. What have we got now? We've got retail. We've got restaurants. We've got government buildings. And so finding that sense of place is really essential, especially to people for whom there is no direct connect to World War II. We have a problem here in Los Alamos because the facilities that were used to, to develop the bomb are what they are called behind the fence. And so at this time, the public does not have access to see these facilities unless one has a clearance or has some kind of a special pass. And so when they come to Los Alamos, they're going to come and what will they see? This could be part of a pilgrimage that takes in some of the missile silos, that takes in some of the other plants, because without that preservation, we won't have these things. We've made great strides recently in this preservation effort. In 2004, Congress passed legislation authorizing the National Park Service to study whether there ought to be a national park site created at each of the major Manhattan Project sites. We hope that this process, which will be completed in 2009, will be the impetus for preserving many of these significant Manhattan Project properties that remain. The work at Los Alamos and the other Manhattan Project sites marked a turning point in human history. As the great Danish physicist Niels Bohr explained it, we are in an entirely new situation that cannot be resolved by war. We use a phrase, and, and I, I don't think it's irreverent, of the atomic tourist. And it's not unusual that, that we will meet people in the museum who are bringing their children for the express purpose of explaining to them this is where one of the most important events in history, certainly the most important event in, uh, in, in the, 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 uh, the 20th century, took place. They're bringing them here to try to help them understand that. These properties were condemned in the mid-90s because they were felt to be surplus and contaminated properties no longer of any value. We almost lost them again with a Cerro Grande fire that swept here and destroyed 80% uh, of these properties. But today, because the Advisory Council for Historic Preservation intervened and the Save America's Treasures grant, we have been able to restore them. Much credit goes to the individuals at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in the state of New Mexico and others who have worked hard for this. It can be done. No great world wars have occurred since these people struggled in their quiet laboratories in the secrecy of the Second World War. This is part of the legacy of our history and our world. Doesn't it deserve preservation? <laughs>